After three months of silence, RPCSX Android has finally dropped a brand new update with some huge improvements. In this video, we're testing the latest version of RPCSX, checking out the best performing games, and showcasing a solid game collection that runs great on this PS3 emulator. From massive bug fixes to smoother performance and exciting new features, this update makes RPCSX even more powerful on Android. Now the big question is, does it work on all Android devices? Can it run high-end games? Are these improvements enough? Or does it still need more time? Let's get started. Now let's see how to download the latest version of the RPCSX UI Android emulator. Fortunately, the RPCSX emulator is an open source project and is available on GitHub. Simply visit the GitHub page, open the latest release, download the APK file, and install it. If you already have the emulator and have enabled the auto download option, simply launch the app and you'll receive an update prompt. Just follow the procedure. Sometimes it may show multiple updates. In that case, repeat the same steps. At the top, we have the RPCSX branding, which looks very decent. The plus icon is used to add games. In the left corner, there's a hamburger menu that includes several options. The firmware section is required to run this emulator. The settings option allows tweaking various configurations, and I'll share the best settings for optimal performance later. The Edit Overlay section lets you manage touch controls, and the on-screen D-pad has been polished with bug fixes, more consistent positioning, and a smart auto-hide feature. System info displays your device specifications, such as cores, GPU, and drivers, which are important when adjusting settings. Finally, the About section provides information about the emulator itself. Let's install the firmware and essential components for running PS3 games. Fortunately, the official PlayStation 3 firmware is available on PlayStation's website, so you can easily download it. Once downloaded, click on Install Firmware in the emulator and navigate to the folder where the file is saved, usually the Downloads folder. It may take 10 to 20 minutes to compile the files. I think APS3E performs better here, as it takes much less time. Now let's add games. Click on the plus icon. It will show two options. Either select a game directory or select a single game. Navigate to the folder where your games are stored and choose the desired option. RPCSX supports both PS3 ISO and PKG formats of games. Disclaimer: The emulator itself is legal, but using illegal ROMs is forbidden. I do not support or provide access to pirated games, so please use legal copies for your safety. Again, it will take some time to compile the games, depending on both the game size and your device's performance. Open the Settings option. View Internal Directory is used to see where the RPCSX UI Android stores data on your phone's storage. Users is a new option, but it is incomplete. Download Channel is a very useful feature. Now the app will get auto-updates, so you don't need to download the APK manually anymore. There are two channels available, Release and Development. Release is the stable version, while Development is the latest version but may sometimes contain bugs. You can also download GPU drivers from GitHub, such as Adreno Tools drivers. Let's start with the best settings. First, head over to the Advanced Settings, then open the Core option. In PPU Decoder, we have Interpreter Legacy, most accurate but extremely slow. Interpreter a bit faster, yet still too slow for regular play. Recompiler LLVM offers the best performance on high-end devices. Tweaking the thread count can yield better CPU parallelism, though the optimum depends on your device. Start with two to four threads. The next option is VFS, which stands for Virtual File System. Here you can set the disk cache, which determines how much storage space will be used to store temporary game data. For now, we will use the default settings. Then, open video settings. Here, you can choose between OpenGL and Vulkan as your rendering API. If your device is low-end or you're running high-end games, set the resolution to 720 by 480 for smoother gameplay. Set the aspect ratio to 16 to 9. The frame rate can go up to 120 frames per second, but I recommend keeping it on auto to maintain stability. Set shader processing to low to avoid crashes and instability, and enable both right color buffers and right depth buffers to fix graphical glitches. Enable V-Sync to eliminate screen tearing, and turn on stretch mode for full screen gameplay. Keep the resolution scale at 100%, which means it will match the resolution you set. If it still lags, lower it to 50% to reduce graphics quality while improving performance and fixing glitches. Open Vulkan. There are many advanced features available. One important option is VRAM allocation, which lets you decide how much of your device's RAM should be used by the emulator. 
For example, I have 12 gigabytes of RAM, so I selected six to eight gigabytes for the emulator. You need to leave some RAM for the system UI and background services, so don't allocate too much. Then, open custom driver and enable turbo mode. You should also enable the performance overlay option to monitor your game's performance in real time. This will show frame rates, GPU load, and other important stats. As for the remaining options, they are already well optimized. You don't need to change them. Lastly, there's one more powerful feature you should definitely use if your device has a Snapdragon chipset. Custom GPU driver support. Click on the plus icon to either download the GPU driver from the service or install it from your phone's storage. Here are all the latest GPU drivers for several phones. Installing the appropriate driver for your chipset can greatly enhance graphics and performance. However, this feature is limited to Snapdragon devices. Overall, these updates make the app smoother, more customizable, and more user-friendly than ever. But there's still a long road ahead to make it perfect for every device. So keep an eye on our channel. Stay tuned for more updates, and don't forget to subscribe for the latest news. See you next time.